How's it going? So today's video is sponsored by Artlist, and I'm gonna be showing you how to create a stronger, more consistent mood in your video edits. So first I'm gonna show you a short film that I made using exclusively stock footage from Artgrid and music and sound effects from Artlist. And then I'm gonna get into how I made it and give you some tips that you can use in your video editing. So let's go ahead and watch the short film. What are you seeking? The comforts of home? Or the shores of solitude? A chorus of tranquility? Or the echoes of the deep? No matter what you seek, no matter how far you go, it will only bring you closer to the greater beyond. Okay, so now I'm going to get into some tips about how you can enhance the mood of your edits, both in terms of the visuals and the sound. Whenever you start a new video or film project, you have a lot of choices to make especially if you're working with stock footage because you have tons of clips that you can choose from. So I like to narrow it down more easily by giving myself a set of limitations or rules that I abide by. So the first question I asked myself was, what kinds of limitations would I have on a real shoot? Well, first of all, you'd be limited in the number of locations and the types of locations you'd go to. For this video, I chose mostly natural locations. I made a conscious decision not to use cities and not to show crowds and not to show too much modern technology. Second, you'd be limited in the number of actors and the types of people that you would cast for those roles. So I cast mostly people who seemed at home in a natural environment. I didn't want too much makeup. I didn't want too much artifice or fancy clothes. This wasn't a fashion video. Next, you have your technical limitations, such as the resolution and the types of cameras and lenses that you're using. So in this case, I wanted as much 4K footage as possible, of which ArtGrid has lots. They even have 5K and 6K footage. And I chose to use as much anamorphic footage as possible in the edit. Anamorphic lenses are the lenses that stretch out the bokeh in the background of your shot. So it looks sort of oval-like. And then you have limitations in terms of how the camera is stabilized. Is it handheld footage? Is it on a gimbal or a Steadicam? Or is it tripod? And I tried to use as much handheld as possible to give everything a very raw, natural feel. And finally, lighting styles. Even if you're using natural light, there's different characteristics of that light that you would consciously use as a filmmaker to create consistency. In my edit, I wanted a lot of soft diffused light, whether it was a twilight glow or firelight or just a cloudy day. By making sure most of my shots used diffused light, I created a consistent look across my edit, even though I was using footage from dozens of different filmmakers. The next way to keep your mood strong in your video is to think in terms of sequences instead of just shots. This tip especially applies when you're working with stock footage because it's so easy just to grab a bunch of awesome looking shots and drop them into the edit thinking that the edit will be awesome as a result. But what ends up actually happening is you have a bunch of really bold, strong elements that don't mix in any cohesive way. So the mood feels jarring. So it makes the edit feel disjointed. It makes it feel like stock footage. So the best way around this that I found is to grab clips that were shot together as part of a sequence. ArtGrid has what's called stories where a filmmaker will submit a bunch of clips from the same day of shooting that all can be edited together to create a coherent scene. You need those connective shots that take you from point A to point B in the little story of each scene to make things feel cohesive. Otherwise, you break the mood by cutting to something that's just too random. My next tip is to use a color palette to guide your edit. So a color palette is a limited number of colors that define the aesthetic of your video. So to show you what I mean, I put an effect on my film to simplify the images down to just the basic colors. And you can see that each scene has a certain color palette and I slowly shift that color palette as I move from one sequence to the next. So there's no jarring changes in the color throughout the film. Keeping a consistent color palette allowed me to smoothly blend footage from a lot of different filmmakers into the same scene. 
And one great thing about getting your footage from ArtGrid is that you can just search by color. So if you need more shots that are dominated by the color green, you just search for green. Okay, my next tip is to search for music by mood, not by genre. So here we have the art list homepage, and if you go over to the left side, you can see there's several ways to filter and search for music. Now, the natural inclination might be to go for genre because you may think, oh, I want a rock track because I want something energetic. But what I would rather do is search by mood and sort of trust the curation of the keywords on art list to sort for me a bit because I like to leave myself open for surprises. If I'm searching for peaceful music, that peaceful music may come from a variety of genres. And what matters most really is the emotion of the music. How does it make me feel? How will it make my audience feel? The genre is much less important. Now, after I've sorted by mood, I go up here and instead of sorting by staff picks, which is the default, I like to switch over and sort by the newest music because while the staff picks are some great tracks that the staff has picked for you, you'll probably end up downloading a song that a lot of other people have used because staff picks is the default sorting algorithm. So if I sort by newest, I have a better shot at choosing a track that hasn't been used by too many people yet. The track I used in my video is called Corals Under the Sun by Sivan Talmor. So if I find an artist who I really like, I'll go to the artist profile and then I'll download either some or all of their songs from the related album. And if you don't need those tracks today, you might want to use them later on another video. And for me, it's so much faster to have the music already on my hard drive than to have to go back online and go search again. My next tip for enhancing your mood is to feature one sound at a time in your soundtrack. So in this film, I had music, I had sound effects, and I also had voiceover. And at any given point in the video, I tried to make sure that only one of those elements was in the foreground, was most noticeable to the audience. Or the shores of solitude. Having too many elements at once will cause an audio clash and it will ruin the mood of your video. Or the shores of solitude. You wanna make sure that your audience only has to follow one thing at a time. Now this doesn't mean that you can only have one sound at a time. I used a lot of sounds on top of each other in the soundtrack of this video. I had ambient beds, I had foreground sounds that were more dominant. I had specific Foley sounds to simulate human noises, natural noises, and I had special effects sounds such as whooshes, rises, and other interesting elements. But I tried to layer my sounds so that only one element was dominant at a time. The comforts of home, and if something else seemed to be clashing or competing with it, the comforts of home, then I would either lower the volume or I'd adjust the EQ. By equalizing out either the highs or the lows of a sound, you can create more room in your soundtrack so that other sounds can come through. And my final tip about mood is to be believable, not necessarily realistic. So what's the difference? Well, being believable means that you create something that the audience will accept emotionally without really thinking about it. It just feels right. Whereas something that's realistic convinces us in a more logical way. And I wasn't trying to create realism. That water droplet sound is not a realistic sound. And even though all that reverb wasn't realistic, I feel like it worked emotionally because we're going from a really close up shot to a really wide shot. So I wanted to indicate space. I wanted to indicate distance and grandness and reverb is a great way to do that. So emotionally, that worked for me. So the bottom line is just trust your gut for what works emotionally for you because mood is all about emotion. And if it works for you, then it's probably gonna also work for your audience. So once again, thank you to Artlist for sponsoring this video. And if you wanna sign up for Artlist, then check out the description of this video and you get two free extra months if you sign up with my link. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. In this course, you're gonna learn the run and gun filmmaking techniques that I've developed over years of practice. And you'll learn how to apply your photography skills toward making great videos. We're going to start with the basics. Here you'll learn how to set up your camera and do basic camera movements, both handheld and on a gimbal. Then I'll teach you how to direct an actor and do basic scene coverage so that you'll be able to shoot a complete scene that cuts together smoothly. Then we'll get into the really fun stuff like complex gimbal moves, shooting out on the street, field audio, and hyperlapses. 
You'll learn some specialty skills like filming a moving vehicle, action sports, and drone filmmaking. Then the shooting lessons will finish with improvised portraits and a party on the beach where you'll learn some important skills for low light shooting. Then it's on to editing where I'll show you the methods I've developed so I can effortlessly work with any amount of footage. First you'll learn how to import and organize your clips, then you'll learn to create string outs, scenes, and master projects. Then I'll take you step by step through each scene in the film, showing you exactly how I put it together and most importantly, why I made my creative decisions. Filmmaking is storytelling and learning to tell a story with the edit is the most important skill of all. I'll show you how I add sound effects and music and then we'll do some finishing touches like color correction, audio level mastering and export. So through the making of this short film, you'll learn essential video skills that have taken me years of real world practice to develop. So I hope you're excited. Let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> 